Hi, this is Clay O'Dell with the New Hampshire Bureau of Emergency Medical Services, and we'd like to give you this infomercial, I guess, for uh, New Hampshire EMT intermediates who are looking for information on how to convert from the uh, currently existing EMT intermediate level to the new AEMT, uh, advanced EMT level. And uh, I recognize that this process is, is somewhat complex and somewhat somewhat confusing. Um, to me, it's sort of like uh, like the instructions to put together a piece of IKEA furniture. You know, it's really complicated, and if you don't pay attention and do it right, you get a piece of furniture that just doesn't look right. So we really want to try and help you through this pro particular process. What we'd like to start with is to give you kind of a brief overview, uh, that, that, you know, summarizing the most important points, and at the end of this presentation, give you a link to further resources uh, for more in-depth information uh, for, you know, for regarding a, you know, like a list of frequently asked questions and things along those lines. But we want to just kind of give you a brief summary um, a summary on, on this um, and then again links to, to our website for, for some additional resources. So I guess to uh, make it very simple, there's really two major components to, uh, to making the conversion from the EMTI to AEMT. Uh, and that uh, talk is consistent, consists of, uh, of uh, taking a, uh, attending a course, um, and even that is, is optional, which we'll, we'll talk about in a minute. But attending a course is one part, and then uh, very importantly is the successful completion of the National Registry of EMTs cognitive exam, computer-based exam for the advanced EMT level. You need to pass that, uh, that exam. So those are the two major components to this process. And we'll kind of lead you through some of the steps as we, as we go along. So I want to talk a little bit about the process, and um, I want to start off by by um, addressing. There's a uh, there seems to be a, a a somewhat misunderstood sense of of urgency. We have a lot of folks who think uh, they got to get this done right away, and and the fact of the matter is, you don't have to do this right away. I'm I'm recording this in December of of 2012. We have people who are going through refreshers right now, and who will uh, be up for recertification with the registry in March, uh, end of March of 2013. They can do it then, uh, you know, for, for this recertification period, or they can wait until the next recertification period. So basically, there's two recertification periods to get this done. As the slide there indicates, if your New Hampshire EMTI license expires in 2013, so March of 2013, if that's your expiration date, the deadline that you have to get this done is by March 31st, 2015. So you can either do it this time around, or you can do it next time. If your New Hampshire EMT license expires in 2014, then the deadline for you to do it is, is March 31st of 2016. So you can either either um, convert up in 20, uh, the 2014 period, or you can wait the following period of 2016. So this isn't something that has to be done overnight. We have some time uh, for you to get this, get this done. So as I said a minute ago, the, um, the process is basically two phase. There's a conversion course, and then there's the exam. What is the conversion course? Well, most uh, the National Registry and most other states are actually calling it a transition course. We, we've had our own transition things, uh, courses that we've been putting on over the years, and we thought that'd be confusing, so we're, we're just calling it a conversion course. Um, but it's basically the materials that, uh, that are needed to get you up to speed to the AEMT level. We've had some folks who think that this is a 100-hour uh, course that's required. That's absolutely not the case. Uh, our our folks uh, the, within the Bureau of EMS and other stakeholders who contributed their time to developing this developed a curriculum that would uh, enable this to happen within the 36 hours of refresher training. Again, you, you're, you're used to taking the 24-hour EMT basic refresher and 12 hours of ALS Con Ed. Still, we're, we're intending to do this all within the 36-hour period as far as the classroom component. So. Um, I think it's important that you, that you understand and, and that you remember that there is no, um, no required separate course for, for, to get you from the EMTI to the AEMT. This is a component of your refresher program. So what is the course, what does it consist of? Well, certainly you're going to have a number of classroom lectures that are designed to give you the information that's new from the EMTI to the AEMT level, um, as well as some refresher stuff on the, the, the basic EMTI uh, education that you, you've had all along. There'll be some practical skills evolutions that you'll be doing as part of your 36-hour refresher. Um, and then there's an optional 
um, item that uh, that we offer to the instructor coordinators that we think is a helpful thing for for students to uh, acquire the information and develop a certain level of comfort uh, moving forward to the uh, the cognitive exam. So what is what is this? This is what we're calling the AEMT exam prep component. And um, again, our intent is that this will be included in the hours of the refresher. So this will be part of the 36 hours. Again, that's up to the instructor coordinator if they want to do it at all. And 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 all, and if you know if so, whether this is included or or whether it's a standalone program, completely up to the IC. Um, but but what is it? It's it's a review of all the uh, all the AEMT material that you're going to be expected to know in the cognitive exam. It's going to be in a multiple choice format. That's similar to what you'll be seeing on the National Registry exam. Um, and it's mostly to just help hone your test taking skills to, to make you more comfortable and, and uh, you know, more prepared to take the AEMT exam. Um, and by doing that also to kind of allow you to do a self-evaluation for what areas that you need, maybe some special, um, special study prior to taking the exam. So this is, again, it's an optional thing. We think most folks are going to be experiencing this. Most instructor coordinators are going to be using that, but it's not a mandatory component. So that's kind of a really brief overview of the classroom component of the ref refresher slash conversion course. Um, we have to emphasize to everybody that there's, I think, a significant out of the classroom uh, personal uh, responsibility uh, for, for studying that's going to have to occur if you're going to successfully uh, pass this, this exam. I really don't think that uh, sitting through class for 36 hours is going to give you the um, all the information that you need, the preparation that you're going to need to pass this test. You know, really, 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 really encourage folks to spend uh, an appropriate amount of time studying the materials, to read the textbook and, and, and prepare yourself for this exam. Um, we really don't think that most providers are going to be able to successfully challenge the exam if they don't commit to, to doing this reading. So, so we really have to encourage you to you know, sit down with a book, uh, set up some time to study on a regular basis prior to taking this exam. There's just a, um, yeah, I, can't, I can't emphasize that, uh, that too much. You have to study for this test. Now, I don't want to tell you that to, to, to scare you. I, I'm confident that most of our folks will be able to ch successfully uh, pass the AEMT exam. I just want to emphasize that you really do need to, uh, to have some uh, you know, personal responsibility to sit down and study, not just sit in class, okay? Anyway, so uh, other questions we have are um, related to, do you have to take a practical skills exam? Is there a statewide exam uh, that you're going to have to take to prove that your, your technical skills uh, for the AEMT level? And the answer is no. We were not going to be doing a statewide exam for this. Uh, basically any practical skills for this level, our anticipation is that this is going to be um, part of your refresher. There's going to be hands-on uh, opportunities for, for testing. Um, and then the instructor will kind of do the evaluation of whether you're competent to provide. Uh, the, the, really the only one that we're, we're, we're looking at that we're not doing in New Hampshire now is the pediatric I.O. So our, our thoughts are is that the instructor coordinators will evaluate your competency in doing that particular skill. And if the instructor coordinator signs off on that, that's okay for us. So again, there is no practical skills evaluation from, you know, as far as a test from the state. That'll be part of your refresher, uh, refresher course. So I know that was a really super quick overview of the, um, the, the, the refresher course component of this. Uh, certainly, we'll, we'll give you the, the links that you can get additional information on our website at the end of this presentation. Uh, but now I want to switch, uh, switch gears and talk about the exam. So, you know, as the, um, as the slide kind of indicates there, there's sort of an exception that a, a New Hampshire licensed EMTI can take the computer exam one time before they actually take a, a refresher slash conversion course. Um, if, you, if you pass it by taking it the first time, that's great. National Registry will, will give you your, your AEMT card. Um, but if you don't pass it, then you're going to go ahead and, um, and, and, and you have to attend a course to try, uh, to try again. Okay, so you only get one shot at it. We don't really recommend that you do this, but you know we have some folks who that's what they wanted to do, and so we, you know, we were able to get that as as an option. But I think most folks are going to be taking uh, the refresher course. 
So most individuals in, in New Hampshire are going to be uh, attending a refresher slash conversion course. Um, they'll be doing a little bit of study on their own. When they're completed with the refresher, they will be approved to take the computer-based AEMT exam. What's the next step? Well, work with your instructor coordinator to find out a little bit about that, but mostly it's, uh, it's, it's signing up with the National Registry on the National Registry's website. That's where you'll find the application process to do this. You will set up a, um, an account with the National Registry in your name if you don't already have one set up, and you'll make the application through the National Registry's website. So as far as signing up for the exam, um, know that the exam costs $70. If you're going through the application process and it wants something other than $70, you've selected the wrong uh, exam. Um, I, I, think the, I think the website itself is pretty self-explanatory. It's not that difficult, but, um, but you should be looking for the exam that costs $70. All right? Now, I think f most folks have gotten the message that the Division of Fire Standards and Training and EMS will give any New Hampshire EMTI a one-time voucher to take the exam. So you contact us, contact the, the Bureau of EMS, the phone number will be at the, uh, um, at the end of this presentation, but uh, ask to talk to an education specialist about how to get, a, get that voucher. You can do it one time, um, and you have, to have it, you have to do it ahead of time. Don't pay for the exam yourself and then expect to be uh, reimbursed for it. That's not the way it works. You have to get us ahead, of, get a hold of us ahead of time to give you a voucher, a voucher number. Um, now, if, if someone is not successful uh, the first time they take the exam, they can certainly take it a number of different times. You can take it up to a total of six times um, before you um, have to consider dropping down to the EMT level. Um, know that it will cost seventy dollars every time that you take the exam so it can get pretty pretty expensive so it certainly uh, behooves you to uh, to study and, and pass early in the process um, again study hard pass it the first time it won't cost you anything it'll it'll be on our dime so that would be that would be a good thing also know that um, you can take uh, the exam up again up to six times. You don't have to do anything after like you, you, the third time. Uh, you could take you could take the exam six times in within a two week period if that's what you wanted to do. But really, you know, at the end of that six um, that sixth exam, um, you're gonna probably you're gonna have to not probably you're gonna have to take an AEMT course in order to successfully become an AEMT. So you, you know, use your time well. So um, so what happens if you don't pass the exam? Well, again, you have six times to do it. What, I mean, what I would do is take it a, a couple of times, and, and if I'm not having uh, the level of success that I would hope, I would certainly uh, try studying a little harder, try again. Um, and then at some point, it would probably be um, the right thing to do to take a conversion course um, before moving on. Um, and then you know, you, what you don't want to do is to necessarily use up all six of your, um, of your tries. Um, without sufficient preparation. We don't want you to do that. Um, what will happen um, in 2015 or 2016 or after you've taken the exam six times unsuccessfully, um, the National Registry will give you a, a, a National Registry uh, Emergency Medical Technician uh, card uh, and you will need to license and, and practice in New Hampshire as an EMT. Uh, currently, what, what is an EMT basic level uh, will be called EMT in the future, um, but that will be the uh, um, the outcome if uh, if you if you either don't want to do this process and want to wait until 2015 or 2016, um, you'll become an EMT, or if you're ultimately unsuccessful passing the test, you will uh, become an, an EMT. So where do you take the exam? Well, again, this is a computer-based exam, and, and currently you have to take it at a uh, Pearson View approved site. Uh, the locations for uh, for the exam uh, currently in, in our area are um, the Pearson View Centers in, in Concord, uh, the affiliated uh, facilities, in, there's one in Nashua, there's one in Conway, uh, one in Littleton, uh, Bradford, Vermont, Brattleboro, Vermont, or Westbrook, Maine are the ones that are closest to our region. You know, certainly uh, the, the idea of the group that looked into this whole process was to be able to offer a, a mobile uh, testing lab, and that's something that we're continuing to move forward with, um, and uh, we hope to have that available either later in the 2012-2013 refresher season or certainly, I'm, I'm hoping, in the, uh, the next refresher season. So um, be on the, on the lookout for that. But for now, plan on attending it at, uh, at one of the... Uh, the um, fixed
sites that I already already mentioned. And those sites, well, they're they're available either on the National Registry's website or you can, if you want to just check out where they are ahead of time, just go on to the um, just Google Pearson View, and um, uh, you can you can check out where uh, where those sites are um, as far as the specific locations, street addresses, and things like that. Well, so that was a uh, really quick overview of this particular process. Um, I hope this was helpful. Uh, certainly to access the, uh, the other information that we have, we encourage you to go onto our website and you've got the, the link there if you want to type it in. Um, I can never remember our website address, so I always Google uh, NH uh, space EMS and it always brings you up to the Bureau of EMS website. Uh, what you want to do next is, is go down to that, the menu section in the middle there to where it says of interest um, and then look for the, uh, the, the uh, menu item that says EMTI conversion process information and you should find a number of different resources there that can um, help answer your, your questions. Uh, we, we try to have a fairly um, up-to-date frequently asked questions um, uh, thing up there so take a, take a look at, at that first and certainly um, feel free to call us at 223-4200 ask to talk to an education specialist and we will try to give you information answer your questions walk you through the process um, we're here to we're here to help you um, we want you to be successful uh, at, at this effort we want to make sure all our EMTIs in New Hampshire sex successfully make the transition to uh, to the AEMT so uh, I hope this short presentation was uh, was helpful to you um, again give us a shout if um, if you still have questions uh, after this and good luck.